Welcome to my There Was Beyond Death MTG Arena draft video. We're going to go over some draft picks and gameplay. Erebos Intervention. Also Banishing Light. Two really good removal spells. Enchantment removal. Remember Hierophant was actually pretty good in this format just because like the self mill was really good with all the um the uh escape cards and stuff. But there's like some graveyard recursion shenanigans also that this enables, but I think Erebo's intervention is great. Instant speed uh interaction. I don't think that you often use like the um like the exiling clause on that, like to exiling your opponent graveyard, that doesn't really seem like that comes up a lot, but maybe it's meant so that like you can play it and construct it, you know, be like, oh, it's like graveyard hate and construct it or something, but it's not something that it would get like really crazy about or whatever, for sure. I don't think the life gain is really good, for sure. I'll take the Erebos intervention. Mm -hmm. This pack is a lot worse. Mogi's favor is like fine. I think this card's actually better than it looks just because there is some number of X1s that you can kill with it. But it, it, I guess it's more of a situational sideboard card. It's not something I would get like excited about taking early. I'm thinking about just taking the Venomous Hierophant. I could just take the Dreamstalker Manticore. It's like fine in uh, black red, or I mean, we don't necessarily have to be black red either. It could just be, you know, um, blue red or something, and maybe splash the Erebos intervention would be fine. I guess I'll just like stay open for a little bit. I think like a 4 2 could potentially do something even without like possible triggers and stuff, right? Another Manticore. Also a Rage Hound and Potato. Potato. It's like double Manticore seems like a really good opening to the draft. Just blow up everything. Annex is really good. This is also good, so they like two for one. Heals your mill stuff too. Um, this is like okay, it's like a protect your creature spell, which is like fine. It's just an annex. I like annex. Mm, green cards galore. Hello. Chainweb, Eric Near. Loathsome Chimera, this Lagana Band Storytell is also good. Warbriar Blessing, well, I guess, uh, like, no black cards to speak of, so I guess, probably just, like, a green card. I mean, I think the Lagana Band Skyteller is fun with, like, the Manticores in the Annex. It gets that back, too. When I say back, I mean, it puts it on top of your library. It's not like it goes directly to your hand, so it's, like, it's not true card advantage is more like it just um it just like it just gives you like it makes your next draw like more knowledgeable it's like oh my i replaced my next draw with um an interesting card stuff and i just remember loathsome chimera actually being decent in the format just because like it triggers all the four power matter stuff and then it's also like the escape cost isn't too bad either I don't know, it might, it might be, like, a little bit awkward. Maybe just the Warbriar Blessing is better, actually. Just because it guarantees you... It usually help, usually means you win the fight and stuff. Right? It usually means you, you win the fight, so I think that's also fair. You know. Just thinking about it. You could definitely see taking the Storyteller, though. Because, like, the Storyteller has, like, a lot of potential, like, getting stuff back, for sure. You know. The two mana cores that get back. This isn't, white-red is not exactly, like, the color combo that wants to be playing this, but I guess maybe we'll see. Miscuvus Chimera, okay, I guess we're just playing blue-red, then. Return to Nature also, and a couple black cards, but 
I think I just want to go blue red now for this thing. Another blue red payoff. Also a white red payoff. These packs are really weird. Is this a better payoff than this one? This seems actually really good. Here, give the plus plus. How's it going? Like suddenly it went from like blue red the pack to like white red everything, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. I haven't really played the stinging line fish, so I don't really know how good it is exactly. I'm not really sure. To be honest, it might be it might be like kind of overrated or whatever. We don't really have like a lot of things to like trigger with it also. So it's like we don't have like anything that's instant speed. I mean we could get instant speed cards eventually, right? That's the thing about it. But like with these bot drafts you often just kind of like look and go like, oh what what uncommons are they passing? Because like usually that tells you right away what you need to do and stuff, right? Right? You know, the cute blue one, you take the fish, because it's cute and blue. You remember liking the set? Yeah, it's like, it's fine that Bob has it going. I think it's it's decent-ish enough. It might be better than, like, call time. It's not like, I don't think call time's bad by any means. It's just I want to do something a little different, that's all. Right now, we'll probably end up doing some call time eventually, like, soon-ish, right? I think those, those are reasonable, for sure. This is also an enchantment for the stuff that cares about enchantments and stuff. I don't know. Right? It's also just like a red card. This is not really that exciting, the hero of the games. You have like no aura as they get with the Heliod's Pilgrim. Really sad. I'm gonna just take this. We'll see. Hmm. No blue cards makes me a little sad. I guess this is like okay-ish. Somebody said this is really good in like a very specific deck. Could also just take the Sentinel's Eyes, which is like maybe okay. You don't know what any of these cards do. Yeah, I barely know what these cards do. I mean, I, I had some experience playing it like IRL and stuff, but like IRL kind of feels like it doesn't matter, right? Feels like it doesn't matter. I know some people really love like playing Wrath and Flames. They'll just like take as many Wrath and Flames as possible, which I mean, it's like a very uh, high variance card because it's like very good when you're ahead and like very, very bad when you're behind and stuff. I don't know. You think the nymph thing is cute, this thing? I think it's supposed to be, like, it's disintegrating. I don't know. It has two floofy cards on one chariot, yeah. You need one to come... Yeah, you can usually get wrap and Flames pretty late, I think. Stacking on them seems extreme, yeah. I'm just thinking a white card, I don't know. This is all bad, so I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's bad. This is like the most playable card. I'm pretty sure this 1-3 is actually like really good. Puppies, yeah. No, it's actually just a it's just a three-headed dog that's sleeping. It's it's not it's not puppies, it's just, it's more like singular puppy. I don't know. I'm not gonna play any of this, so it doesn't matter really. Okay, yeah, these are all well, whatever. These kind of go with the Dream Stalker Manticore, this 2-3. Lamprad and Neo Gray, yeah. Yeah, this deck is really all over the place, but I guess that's what happens when you play like bot drafts. Like the last bot draft I did, like I barely got enough playables. It was actually a little scary, like just playing a bot draft and like barely getting like playables, because like the color signals are bad. It sort of reminded me of playing like uh, Eternal drafts and stuff. Because like Eternal drafts were kind of like, oh my my cards are like. I don't know, I don't have enough playables. This is actually pretty good that came back. This 3-1. I remember the 3-1 was actually pretty decent. And the organ of the puppy is its heart, yeah. The defining organ. I don't know, like, I guess we have to call Art Judge. Maybe, um, maybe, like, uh, Epic Handyman Art Judge will explain, like, what's happening. More puppies, yeah. It's like the puppy. 
This is like okay. Somebody said never to play Grim Physician. I don't know if that's actually true. I, I think it's like okay in like a very specific deck where you want to like block and stuff. Like it can block. I guess it's not always worth a card unless you have the sacrifice outlets. The blue lady was pretty. Oh yeah. The mask thing is creepy. Yeah. Green cards, okay. It doesn't really tell you anything, though. Okay, Temple Thief. Well, that's a really good red card. There's also a Fateful End, which is really good. Um, Final Death is good. This is like, okay, the almost um, It's like the really good red card, though. I mean, there there are ways of, like, actually dealing with um this red card that, um... Stops it from like recurring. Cat Warrior, yeah, it is a Cat Warrior. Let me take the red card. I don't think this is actually like a real thing in draft, but it's kind of funny with um. This is funny with like enchantments that um draw a card if they go into your graveyard and stuff, because like this brings them back. Escape is the Phoenix, yeah, for Phoenix the Masses, right. This card's also really good because it just basically shuts down like an entire mechanic. It's a Dwarf Berserker of Hate, yeah, it's like, uh. It's basically like you're drafting the, um, whatever the. Breakneck Berserker, yeah. It's not that exciting. I don't know, do I want to play black red or do I want to play blue red? I don't really have like instants, which sucks. I don't know. I mean cling to dust is also like not the worst either. Like it like cling to dust can be really good, like in some situations. So it feels more like a sideboard card that you play in constructed, I guess. Right? Yeah, I actually feel like the Timurid is better than um Storm Herald, we're like really being honest about things. Right. Especially because I have no auras. If you get like a bunch of like Aroa's Blessings, it's really good. Like, because you get, because you get, like, you can just replay your Aroa's Blessings and stuff. But I don't know where I actually have that many blue cards. I'm just gonna take the Timoret and see what happens. Um. Ooh, Blight Breath, Caliblaphus. It might be a little bit too late to do this unless we go very heavy black, because it's kind of bad if you're not going heavy black on this. This card's also like really good if you're in the four power matters deck. This I'm not really sure. I think so. I think what you're supposed to do with this is you play it on turn six, and then you play another land, and then you play like Portent of Betrayal, and then you steal your opponent's creature, and then at, during your end step you sacrifice the creature, paying. Two colorless and red to sacrifice it. I mean, you can also combo this with, um, like, omens. Because, like, all the omens or whatever, they do something when they enter the battlefield and then they stick around, and then you can just sacrifice the omens to the Dream Shaper Shaman. But you know, it feels, like, really slow to, like, do that. I kind of just want to take the Catablate bus. I don't think we're playing blue at this point. That's the thing. Six mana five four to die to disenchant. Yeah, that was like another thing about this format is that um is that like you you kind of don't want to play like really really expensive enchantment creatures because everybody's like main decking um, return to nature or evoke existence. So just like your creature just gets like blown up and then you feel bad because like it traded down really badly like in that sit in that sense but i mean sometimes you can just like overload people with like enough targets that like they they might not actually be able to like exile your um your enchantment creature because you just played like a bunch of other enchantments beforehand i feel like the beetle's really good but i don't know if i want to take the green return nature so good yeah like if i thought green was open at all i would try to take this with like Two things that combo of it. I don't know. The Stampede Rider looks kind of bad here. Hey there, Tasty McNugget. How's it going? The borders are sparkly. Yeah, I do like the the, the borders are sparkly. I can just want to take this Blight Breath Catalapus. Even though it, it might not be the best in the deck, we can maybe make it work. Oh, crap. And of course, no black cards now. And then, uh... That's awkward. 
I mean, these are like this is not real. I actually don't think this card's very good. Like, because everybody like I like it looks good in practice, but then like it doesn't it doesn't stop like abilities of the card. Like it can't attack or block, but it's still there or whatever. You like the owl, you know. Am I gonna play a four five for four? Maybe I don't know. I mean, I have to play a four five for five. I mean, hey, Tasty McNugget, how's it going? Fox onesie? Yeah, yeah. I have, sometimes I wear like a fox onesie on stream, but hope you're doing well, Tasty McNugget. Yeah, I saw you over in the uh, Infinite Breakfast stream. Hope things went well with the Infinite Breakfast. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just trying to see what. Warly, there's an animal. Yeah, it's a 4 5 for 5. It's like playable. What? What? That sucks. I mean, I guess. This is actually fine, this 2 1. If I had like more. If I had more sack outlets, I might actually consider Porter the Betrayal. But I only have like one sack outlet right now. This isn't sacrifice. No, the sack spaces. I have two sack outlets. It doesn't seem like it's enough to play um, Port and Betrayal, but this 2-1's like fine, it blocks. It went over to the Goat token, yeah. I mean, yeah, because like Goat has like an epic beard and an epic horns or whatever. You know, beards and fluff horn, yeah. I don't think White Blue was open last pack, so I guess I'm surprised to see that, because this card's really insane if you you get it going, but I'm just going to take the 2-1. It's good. Moment of the Dead is like okay ish. Combos with the uh, Scophos War Leader because you can sack the enchantment to it. I don't think this is really a hateful idol on the deck. This is more of a white black card. You want to combo with Meyer's Grasp, basically. I mean, yes, you could put positive enchantments on your creatures and hope they die somehow to like trigger this, but that's not really what you want to do i guess it's like most of the time you're actually just doing this with like myers graphs to like draw a card right yeah these aren't really exciting green cards either it's like the two two for three that gains like three or four life it's not really exciting i just remember like in the original theros there was a four mana three three that did this and like people basically never like took it it was a common to stick the omen there's a Dream Shaper now. Or the Portent. I guess I can take it. I don't think I'm going to take any of that. The Flicker's really good. It has like some really niche applications that make it better than it looks. Like just being able to like Flicker a, um, a Blessing or something is really cool. Or like flickering your creature in response to removal. You forgot about wheeling, yeah. No, well this isn't... I don't think this wheel because pick 7. But I'm just to take the 5 4. We might get another thing. This is actually fine. This fine 2 drop. Flickering Gary is pretty powerful, yeah. This is a fine 2 drop. It exiles stuff when it takes damage, I mean. I think this card can be fine if you're really slow, but I don't know. I'm not really that excited about the 1 3 or the cost 3 to activate. I don't know, this is all bad. I guess wings can sometimes be playable. I think there was like some magic arena challenge to like actually kill a Gorgon using this card, and then like the chance of actually doing that in um constructive was very low. Because I don't think there were like playable Gorgons during the time, though I guess now if you play like historic, like changelings count as Gorgons stuff so it like works out i don't know hero or cling to dust kill one of the two gorgons in the set yeah there's not really that many even gorgons in the set that you can kill so this is functionally like a three two for two in like black red you're not going to really be targeting your creature with like a, a beneficial spell in black red most of the time, like, I can't imagine, like, unless you just drafted, like, a bunch of Infuriates or something, which is something you could have done. It would be like, oh, I drafted, like, ten Infuriates or whatever, just because I'm being hipster and stuff. I don't know. Maybe Cling to Dust is technically playable. I have one aspect, you know. 
I think this card's actually playable in draft, but it might just be really clunky because it's like. I guess it depends. Like, oh wait, you only draw a card if you exile a non-creature. Never mind. I guess it's not that exciting. I thought this was just cremate with escape on it. Like cremate, cremate with escape on it would actually be pretty decent. You like cling to the hose of escape, you know. I don't know. I may even try it. Maybe there's like an es escapable card. I don't know. Try that. Is this a card that I would ever play? You can sack it to the Dream Shaper Shaman, I guess. So this Timer Red, yeah, Timer Red also does that, yeah. I don't think I was playing that hero, to be honest. It was very unlikely I was going to play either of those cards. It's not really that big of a deal. I think this is actually pretty decent in green-black. Because you're probably going to have, like, a four-power creature or greater that, like, you can, like, start gaining a bunch of life with it. I don't think this is actually that good of a trick, to be honest. But I don't know. I might, I might just take it and probably not play it, but let's see. I'm going to take this. So don't put Unknown Shores in your deck unless you have, like, very, very solid reason to do so. Because, like, um, playing a colorless land has a high cost associated with it, and then also... Um, Having to pay one extra to, you know, do your cast your color spell is really problematic. Ooh, they've got the port of the betrayal on the wheel. That's good. Oh, there's a Clofus. Uh, can I splash Clofus, or do I just say drag the underworld? I don't know. This is never becoming a creature in this deck, is it? Probably not. I don't, I think Clofus is kinda doesn't work that great. If we're trying to make Blight Breath Cataplapus do something, is the downside. I mean, I, I know I'm just going to play the Drag of the Underworld. Right? Like, I know I'm just going to play that. I mean, I guess. I mean, Clothus is actually really good, too. Is Clothus just good enough that I should just always take it from Splash? I don't know. You would just take the Drag, you know. So this is, like, not the adult choice to take this card. This is, like, not the adult choice to take this card, right? And little Atari card from Graveyard. This actually seems kind of insane if you can splash it. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is never going to be a creature in this deck. This is more like an enchantment that just says, like, uh ramp sometimes or hit your opponent for like two damage a turn right it does count for two of its own you know do i just take it and just like see what happens is that really is it that is that really like really what i'm doing here you know oh whatever i'm gonna take it it's probably a bad idea we're probably not going to get the fixing for it, but especially at this point, yeah, we don't we don't have any travelers amulets. Arrow's blessing. Arrow's blessing is fine. Arrow's blessing is what I want. Unknown shores of Pantheon, you know. I passed an unknown shores after I was like ranting about how bad unknown shores was. So that that kind of feels bad. I'm gonna take the Arrow's blessings is good. Mm, 3-1. Yeah, I think it's like another 3-1. I think it's a 3-1 over a 2-1. 3-1 must attack. I'll say that where's Paul though? How's it going? Another Annex. So I can, uh... I can play both Annexes and Legend Rule 1 to the other one. I don't think this is actually a Blight Breath deck, to be honest. This is going to be really bad in this deck, isn't it? Yeah, we have like nine black cards. I'm not going to play all of them. What if I just play Mono Red? Can I do that? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't think I can play Mono Red. I'm going to take the rate. I'm going to take the Annex number two. Get the extra Annexes. We can, like, kill one with the other one if we want to assert dominance on Annex. 
Free some Mogi, okay. Well, this is like an on color, uh, on color, uncommon, so. I mean, there's a chance that that amulet from the Clothis pack wheels, but I don't know. We don't really know for sure. It's like the on color, uncommon, though. Home of the four, just fine. Can sack it to slaughter priest with Mogi. Yeah. Yay, you can sack the Clovis the Priest. It's like, oh, we're just gonna sack this. Eh, I guess I play this altar of the Pantheon. I guess it does work with, um. It does work with Annex, right? the ability on it, and then, like, if we somehow cast Clothis off of it, we can gain one life a turn of this altar. It's funny. Another altar. Am I really playing double altar in this deck? Is that crazy? These are basically just, like, basic forests that cost three. Well, I guess they can, sp they can tap for anything, but just do it. Yeah, I guess I'm not playing Crap and Flames. Pack is really bad, I guess. I already have, like, a Wings of Hubris. And I don't think I'm gonna play, like, uh... I guess... Do I have Instants and Sorceries? I have one Instant. So this is not actually gonna do anything. This Arena Trickster, I have one Instant. I guess technically Omen triggers it. But... And these two Omens can trigger it, but I don't think I'm playing any card from this pack, so... I already have a Wings stuff, so I don't know. Go to the sideboard. Port of the Betrayal. Number two. Yeah. It was a... Oh, the Rage Hound came back sick. I'll play that. I'm not gonna play a Satyr's Cunning though. The card's bad. The card's also bad. All right, this deck is like fine. It's not great. It's not the best. I actually kind of feel like I should just cut this Catoblapus. Because it's not going to do a lot. We're just functionally playing, like, 19 lands. We're playing double altar to Pantheon. People are going to be like, why the hell is this guy playing uh, double altar to Pantheon in his deck? And then, like, they'll they'll figure out why. I guess it does work with the Blight Breath Cattle Play Plus playing the altars because it does increase the amount of um, devotion to black for it, but it's not even really a great reason. That's okay, we're just doing... I, I think the actual correct pick was the drag of the Underworld, but we're just... I'm just doing this because clo it's fun to play, like, your, your Mythic and stuff on the Splash. It's like when you splash your Ashiok and stuff. It's like you just go... You, you would just splash Ashiok for, for certain anyways in this type of deck. Any deck, really. Wait, we don't need this 1-3. I think this one I think the sack one three is fine. I don't know if Temple Thief seems bad. These are four twos. These are four twos. Like I'm not triggering these that often. I, I think this is also pretty bad, the writer. Like, I mean there's like something I just don't need aspect either. Do I have that many sack outlets for this? I have one, two. I'm looking at how many sack outlets I have for Portland. I have three, four. I have four ways to sack a thing. I don't think I actually want Port of the Betrayal either. Maybe if I had like five sack outlets, is that just really, um, really like arbitrary to say like I want five, I want five sack outlets for my Port of the Betrayal to make it work? But I don't know. You know. I think it's too situational, really. We're, like, functionally playing 19 power, but I guess with the Dream Shaper Shaman, it's kind of necessary that we're going to need to have a lot of power to do stuff. Uh, do I really want to play, um...
I'm deciding what card I want to cut now. I mean, we're just playing 19, 19 lands functionally. I don't. The thing is, like, you can't really cut lands when you're playing like a three drop. You just cut the aspect. Yeah, I guess aspect's kind of poopy. Aspect's not bad with like the rage hounds, like trying to push them in, but I guess it's not really that necessary. We'll just let them. We can just probably eat them at some point, like if they are going into like a bad attack, right? It's some number of sack owls. It's not like a ton, but oh, we don't even need that many black sources. Actually, we just need like seven black sources, I think, in this deck. Cause, like we're mostly playing. This is mostly a red deck. Yeah, this deck is not the best, but it's it's like fine. It's just do Rakdos aggro, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it's actually a good idea to splash the Clopas in the deck, but it, it's just more, like, interesting. It's, like, fine. I mean, I see people winning games with, like, five Pious Wayfarers in their deck, and I don't like that card either, but somehow people win with those decks, so I don't know, right? Like, does somebody know like why those cards are why those de people are doing so well with those decks? I, I need to know. Someone explain. You love Pious Wayfarer. Oh, perfect mana. Can't cast as Phoenix of Ash, but whatever. Downside of the splashing or no cost of splashing. So Pious Wayfarer. Oh, we're dead, right? To that. We died. I can Erebos Intervention for zero if I play the Swamp. Is that relevant? Oh, they hit me for one. Ouch. I could blow that up on... I'm so dead to this one, too, yeah. I'm just going to nuke that other one, then. If they're playing multiples of this... Okay, so no Omen of the Dead. Okay. They have no Omen of the Dead, which is really good. So I just start attacking with this, or I deploy my 4-2, I'm deciding. I mean, I guess I just deploy the 4 the 2-2 the and hope they don't have... So, so the thing is, I don't really want to play the Phoenix of Ash into a Dreadful Apathy. Like, because that really shuts it down. Like, I really want them the Dreadful Apathy, the Dreamstalker Manticore you would alter... Why are we altering into what? Just ramp it up? No, I'm just going to play a 4-2. We don't need to ramp into anything. We don't have a 6-draw. They're going to alt they're gonna Dreadful Apathy this and attack me for 2? I'm fine with that. Dreadful Apathy, do it. You know you want a Dreadful Apathy. They just conceded to my 4-2? <laughs> okay, I don't get it. They're like, uh, a 4-2... Okay. I don't get it. Yeah, Dicey Dungeon soundtrack. A 4 2 is too powerful. They would have conceded the altar. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, hey, to Given Plus Plus, how's it going? If you want to watch uh, quality eternal content, you should check out Given Plus Plus. Perfect mana base again. And the altar. It's like a load bearing altar. I do like that the Dream Stalker mana cores make two tokens for Annex, FYI. Two tokens. Because they're a 4 2. So they make two they make two one ones that can't block. Which is totally fine. I'm putting my extra red source. Uh no, it's a common. It's a common. I'm probably just going to play the 4-2 first, because it beats down harder. Wolf Willow Haven, uh-oh, they ramping, uh-oh, ramping. Oh great, we just drew two more lands, these Altars of Pantheon, these lands that cost two. Exactly. Oh, and that's with the, and that's with the, with the, um, the Altar of the Pantheon, we get to gain life. Sick. Sickness. Oh, they're three colors, this is dead, right? They're going to nuke it down. Underworld charges. I can't block. 
I could just blow that up, but I think I just want to play another Dreamstalker Manticore, to be honest. So I put in pressure on them that way. So I attack with this. They can't block, so I attack and play another Manticore, I think. Manticore, Manticore, Manticore. Is there like a Force Spike in the set? No, I don't think so. Oh, I played the Annex. I thought I played the Manticore. Oops, my bad. I got confused. It's fine, Annex can be almost do as much damage as the Manticore. They're gonna kill it though. They're gonna kill it now. Next turn I can play the Altar of the Pantheon into the Dream Stalker Manticore. They're gonna kill the Annex. Rude! Rude. 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 So this is just going to trade with a lionfish, which sucks. Then I just play another manticore. I don't think I want to arrow his blessing the 2-1, honestly. I don't think that's right. I think we just attack here and then pantheon into another manticore. I'm fine with this dying. It's not that important to my plan. I think there's going to trade there, yeah. They have a pump spell in black? No, okay. I don't gain my life off of the Pantheon anymore since Annex went to the bottom of the library. Uh oh. Uh oh. How much does this take back? Uh. So I can Aroa's Blessing and blow up their Underworld Charger, but they just trade with the Shoal Kraken, and then they can escape their Underworld Charger, the 5-5. Five five. Is that actually fine? I think I have to do that, because I don't think like blocking the Underworld Charger is very good either, because they're probably going to fuel it eventually. So this kind of sucks, because I'm going to blow this up, and then they trade with their Shoal Kraken. But I don't know what else to do at this point, honestly. I hope they don't have a mystic, whatever, a dismissal thing that would be sucky. I guess I can just hold this back, but they're going to get back their horse, I guess. I don't know. Do I even have a combat trick that kills that? I guess I can leave this back to block their horse. Because they're going to get their horse back with a 5-5. I don't think we're racing that, unfortunately. We're not like racing the horse when they get it back. Because they can get a. Like, they just need to put one card in their graveyard and it should be pretty easy for these colors. Oh, they have a removal for the spell for this. Oh, okay, we're super dead. Because they're going to get their horse back now next turn. And we just flood it out. Cool. Clothus, where are you? Clothus, why did you do this? They get their horse back now, because it's a 5-5 five, five can't block. Starlit Mantle main phase, just a loot, I see. Okay. That's a very bold statement. They're getting their horse back now. I want my horse back, horse back, horse back, horse back. Do, 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 Oh, they have, uh, no, they're just escaping that, yeah. We're, we're pretty dead. Light Breath Cattle Blade Pus to assert dominance. No, I'm just... Um... That wouldn't work. Even with these two altars, that's only negative four, negative four, we're dead. We're dead. You drew a little bit too many land. That's what happens when you play uh, 19 land with Clothus. I'm just gonna blame the Clothus. And not the fact that I'm splashing for it. Sure. The six drop. We're playing functionally 19 lands. I don't mind keeping a six drop in my opener. Yeah, 
Yeah, when people say, like, I want to play 16 lands in the mana lift, I'm a little bit afraid, because, like, like, at least with, like, I can sort of understand if you say I'm playing 16 lands and Path to the World Tree, because, like, the average hand should probably have, like, two lands in it, so, like, then in that case, then your Path to the World Tree is just a two mana land, but it has, like, a lot of flexibility because it can be anything, Real right? I don't know. I think we run out the two one first and not the slaughter priest because I kind of don't want this getting blown up right away. They're gonna bounce my discarded piper back to my hand, I think. No, okay, just reading it. We just got a reader. Got a reader. Land. Bounce it? No. Alright, get out there, Slaughter Priest of Mogi. Counter. There's no uh, two mana counter in this set that would counter this. Like, most of the counters are like three or four in this set for some reason. They might just, have, they might just bounce it back to my hand if they have like a, like a Stern Dismissal or something. Gonna need to draw that land real soon. Uh, that's really bad. Well, we're just kind of dead to this card, right? I mean, there's no way they block this. They should just let that through, yeah. And that's going to become like a 3 4 now. Yeah. This was one of the most insane bombs in the set, by the way, this Nader Kraken. If we had actually drawn land. Oh, the main phase is X and goal, just to assert dominance. Okay. They can't kill that now. Because that's just going to be too big for me to kill it now. I mean, we can still keep playing, but this isn't, like, really a game. Because I don't have, like, a final death for this, and it's too big now for me to kill it. Elite Instructor, okay. Oh, this is not great. Because they also get to they also get to trigger the Nader Kraken again. Pretty functionally dead to this. They, they might as well just attack, honestly. I guess they're playing around Final Flare. Yeah. We don't have an answer to the Nader Kraken. So let's just scoop it up. Move to the next game. This format has less crazy bombs in it than uh, Kaldheim does, but there's definitely some cards that are, like... They just take over the game when they get played, like, um, Nader Kraken and, uh, Nader Kraken, Dream Trawler, and, uh, and Nader Kraken, Dream Trawler, and just, um, like, Kiora Best of Seagon. There's just nothing you can do about it most of the time, right? Like, you just play as a Kiora Best of Seagon, you're just, like, super dead. It's fine. I mean... That is why bombs exist to make games more interesting by uh you auto lose. You know. Yeah. 
No cost of splashing, by the way. Do you look like I have the Moldus hands? This is better. Oh, there's the Clothus. We can put the Blight Breath Catoblapus on the ground on the bottom. And keep the Clothus and hopefully hit a green source for it and see if this card's good or not. Yeah, I think Semulin almost... Oh, they mold a 5. Ouch. That's really rough. We can cast Timeret if I want to, but I don't think casting a 2-2 two, a two, two Timeret is actually good. We're probably still going to run out the Rage Hound here. Unknown Shores, all right. And send the Oracle... So that will actually kill my um that will kill my rage hound, which sucks, but I'd actually rather lose the rage hound than my timeret. Because the timeret's gonna be real good later. I think they're just gonna trade with my uh incendio oracle. If they have some way of pumping this like a 4-4, that's kinda bad. If they attack, I'm not gonna block. Brawn Sword, okay, are they gonna equip it? No blocks. Well that costs three to equip. No wonder if this card was actually like really clunky. Yeah, that's really clunky that costs three to equip. They could have underworld fires. Okay, so they want to trade there, I guess. Sure. One card in the graveyard, so we can probably soup this up. Oh, am I doing stream raiders? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I am. Sorry, I'm definitely gonna do stream raiders. Give me a second. Why do they keep attacking like that? Also, give me one second. Yeah, let me do stream raider. Also, let me change the game scene because apparently I'm in the wrong scene. Also, maybe I'm in the right scene depending on how you want to look at it. Also, I just noticed my opponent post-combat equipped their um, guy, which is really confusing to me, actually. I'm finding that really confusing. I don't know why they did that. Let me fix the camera. There we go. Now do I have to trade with that? I lose my timerette. I feel like I don't trade with that. I'm taking four, but... Yeah, that actually makes sense, actually. Where's Paul, though? Oh, man, this flood is kind of bad. They're holding up a trick. Yeah, it feels like they're holding up a trick, for sure. Or not. I guess I hold land in case they splashed for the, um... The thing. They splashed for, like, the aspect of land. I can gain a life by exiling that, I guess. They don't have any other escape cards in the graveyard, so I don't need to do it yet. Starlit Mantle main phase, alright. Sure. So they're actually just trying to race me with the 5-3? Is that what's happening? Sure. Where's my Clothus? Come on. Come on. Delicious life point. Phoenix of Ash. Um. So am I dead to this pumping? I'm dead. This goes up to seven, right? I can attack them for seven. This turns into five. And then they can take. The I'm dead to like a combat trick, but I don't think double blocking that is good. I feel like we're supposed to try and race them. If they have a combat trick, it's whatever. I, I don't think that double blocking that is good, though. Maybe I was supposed to trade with that early on when they were racing me. Or trying to race me with a sword. Right? 
Okay, I'm dead to like a plus three, plus three or something. They're splashing a plus three, plus three, I'm dead. Oh, they did have it, okay. Well, I guess I should have chumped it. I don't know, I, I guess I should have chumped it. Okay, well, that was a really quick draft. Yeah, maybe that deck was just wasn't that good also. It didn't really have all removal. Yeah, I should have just chumped it or traded with that 2 2 earlier instead of trying to race them. I still don't think I was going to draw that many lands. Okay. Alright. Well, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to uh, stop the video now, but have a good night.